Good morning everyone. We are the group eight, presenting anions or acid radicals for wet test for carbonate, sulfide, sulfide, and nitrite anion. First, let's have an overview for our presentation. The following tests performed on the videos provided by all labs were 1. Confirmatory tests for carbonate, which are reaction with dilo, dilute hydrochloride test, and magnesium sulfate test. Number 2. Confirmatory tests for sulfite, which are barium chloride test, potassium dichromate test, and potassium permanganate test. Number 3. For the confirmatory tests for sulfide, which are sodium nitroproside test, lead acetate test, cadmium carbonate, and cadmium carbonate test. Number 4. For the confirmatory tests for nitrite, which are ferrous sulfate test, starch iodide test, and diphenyl amine test. For our objectives, the objectives of this presentation were 1. To tackle and discuss the confirm confirmatory tests for carbonates, sulfide, sulfide, and nitrate anions. Number two, to observe the reactions observed during the test for carbonate, sulfide, sulfide, and nitrate anions. Number three, to analyze and make a conclusion from the observations noted. And of course, the main objectives, which is to confirm the presence of carbonate, sulfide, sulfide, and nitrate anions in each wet test performed. So for the first confirmatory, confirmatory test for carbonate, but first, let's have a short introduction for carbonate. In chemistry, carbonate is an inorganic salt characterized by the presence of the carbonate ion in which the carbon atom is surrounded by three oxygen atoms in a triangular planar manner. Carbonate materials are found in sedimentary rocks. The most common is calcite, which is the main component of limestone. So let's move on to the conformation of carbonate or CO3 to negative for the first reaction with dilute hydrochloride test. Based on the theory provided by the link or cited from Oles.com, carbonate on reaction with dilute hydrochloride gave carbon dioxide gas that reacted with lime water and produced a white precipitate of calcium carbonate that turned lime water milky. To further explain this theory, let's take a look at the formula of the chemical reaction of the dilute hydrochloride test. But first, Let's take a note that in case of soluble carbonate, the test was performed with water extract and in case of insoluble carbonates, the test was performed with a solid salt. So, based on this experiment on dilute hydrochloride test, after adding dilute hydrochloride to a portion of the salt solution, a brisk effervescence and evolution of colorless and odorless gas was observed. If you are curious about what is brisk effervescence, it is defined as a rapid or vigorous evolution of a gas in a chemical reaction. And after that, or after passing the evolved gas through lime water, or acting ad after adding lime water to the evolved gas, it was observed that the lime water turned milky, which is we don't know, what, know why yet. But, based on the information and evidences given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was confirmed and concluded that the evolved gas was carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide or the evolved gas reacted with lime water and formed a white precipitate of calcium carbonate which was responsible for the milkiness of the solution. And with this, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the reaction with dilute hydrochloride was because of the presence of carbonate. Let's take a look at the image of the result of the, reac of the reaction with di dilute hydrochloride. So for the second test, for the confirmation of carbonate, which is the magnesium sulfate test. Based on the theory given in the link cited from olabs.com, soluble carbonates reacted with the magnesium sulfate solution and formed a white precipitate of magnesium carbonate. To further explain this theory given by the olabs.com, let's take a look at the formula of the chemical reaction. So based on the experiment performed on magnesium sulfate, after adding magnesium sulfate or MgSO4 solution to a portion of salt solution, it was observed that a white precipitate form or a formation of white precipitate was observed during the reaction. And based on the information and evidence given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was confirmed and concluded that the white precipitate that was formed was MgCO3 or magnesium carbonate. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the magnesium sulfate test was because of the presence of carbonate. And this image was the result for the magnesium sulfate test, which is the white precipitate in the solution. 
Now for the second confirmator test, which is for sulfite anion. But first, let's have a short introduction for sulfite. Sulfites are compounds containing sulfite ion. In the sulfite ion, the sulfur atom is double bonded to the one oxygen atom and single bonded with the two other oxygen atoms. The result to one bonded lone pair of electrons in the sulfur. Sulfites are often used as fusinated dried fruits, grizzled radishes, and fried potato products. So for the test, first test for the confirmation of sulfite, SO3 to negative, barium chloride test. Based on the link provided and cited from olabs.com, sulfites on reaction with barium chloride form a white precipitate of barium sulfate. So to further explain this theory given, let's take a look at the chemical reaction of the test. Based on the experiment on, bar on barium chloride test, after adding barium chloride test, barium chloride solution to a portion of salt in a test tube, it was observed that a white precipitate was formed, just like in the theory. And after adding a small amount of dilute hydrochloride to the precipitate form, the precipitate was dissolved with the evolution of gas. And based on the information and evidence as given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was confirmed and concluded that the white precipitate that was formed during the reaction was barium sulfite or BaSO32 negative. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the barium chloride test was because of the presence of sulfite or SO3 negative to negative. This was the image of the barium chloride test. As we can see in the B image, there is a white precipitate at the bottom of the test tube. For the second test for the confirmation of sulfite or SO3 2 negative, which is potassium permanganate test. Based on the theory provided in the link of cited from olabs.com, the color of potassium permanganate was discharged, discharge, dis, discharge when it reacted with sulfite. And to further explain this theory, let's take a look at the chemical formula of the test or of the potassium permanganate test. So, based on the experiment of potassium permanganate permanganate test, after adding a few drops of potassium permanganate solution acidified with dilute, hydro, dilute sulfuric acid into the aqueous solution of the salt, it was observed that the color of potassium permanganate or KMNO4 solution got discharged. And based on the information and evidences given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was concluded that the test confirmed the presence of sulfite ion. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the potassium permanganate test was because of the presence of sulfite and iron. This was the result of the potassium permanganate test, as we can see in the image. As we can see in the image, the solution is very light or the, the color of the solution it was very light because it was discharged or the solu potassium permanganate solution got discharged. And that is also because of the presence of sulfite ion. So for the third test for the confirmation of sulfite, which is potassium dichromate test, based on the theory given or given or provided in the link of Olabs.com, a green color was obtained when sulfites reacted with potassium dichromate solution. And to further explain this theory, let's take a look at the molecular chemical formula of the reaction. So based on the experiment on potassium dichromate test, after adding potassium dichromate solution acidified with dilute hydrochloric, dilute sulfuric acid into a portion of aqueous solution of salt, it was observed that a green color was formed. And based on the information and evidences given, which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was concluded that the test confirmed the presence of sulfite ion. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the experiment on potassium dichromate test, we can confirm that it is due or it is because of the presence of sulfite and ion in this solution. And this is the result of the potassium dichromate test which gives the solution a green coloration. For the third, third confirmatory test which is for sulfide and ion, let's have a short introduction. 
Sulfides are inorganic compounds of sulfur containing sulfide ions. Sulfide ions forms a variety of compounds. One famous example is a variety of yellow cadmium sulfide or cadmium yellow. The black tarnish on solid silver is also due to the formation of silver sulfide. Now for the first test for the confirmation of sulfide, which is sodium nitroprusside test, based on the theory given or provided by Olafs.com, sul sulfides gave a violet or fourfold coloration with the sodium nitroprusside solution due to the formation of na 4 fe cn 5 nos or, or we can call sodium or we can call sodium pentacano nitrosyl ferrate 2. To further explain this theory, let's take a look at the formula, chemical formula of the test. So, based on the test performed on sodium nitroprusside, after adding a few drops of sodium, sodium nitro, nitroprusside solution into a portion of salt solution, it was observed that a purple or violet coloration was obtained in the solution. And based on the information and evidences given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reach a conclusion. Therefore, it was confirmed that the violet or fourfold coloration of the solution was due to the formation of na 4 fe cn 5 nos or sodium pentacano nitrosyl ferrate 2. And so we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the sodium nitroprusside test was because of the presence of sulfide anion. This is the result of the sodium nitroprusside test. As we can see in the image, the color, the coloration of the solution is violet or purple. And for the second test, for the confirmation of sulfide, which is lead acetate test, and based on the theory given or provided by Olives.com, sulfides reacted with lead acetate and formed a black precipitate of lead sulfide. To further explain this theory, Let's take a look at the chemical re chemical reaction or chemical formula of the, react the reaction. So, based on the test performed on lead acetate, after adding lead acetate solution into a portion of salt solution, it was observed that a, that a black precipitate was observed. And based on the information and evidences given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reach a conclusion. Therefore, it was concluded that a black precipitate was lead sulfide or PBS. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred was because of the presence of sulfide anion. Let's take a look at the result of the lead acetate test. As we can see, the solution is color black. The solution is color black and it gave a black precipitate at the bottom. And so, for the third test for the confirmation of sulfide, which is cadmium carbonate test, Based on the theory given and provided by Olives.com, sulfides react with the suspension of cadmium carbonate to form a yellow precipitate of cadmium sulfide. To further explain this theory given, let's take a look at the formula of the chemical reaction. Based on the test performed on cadmium carbonate, after adding a suspension of cadmium carbonate in water into a portion of aqueous solution of salt, it was observed that a yellow precipitate was formed. And based on the information and evidences given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reach a conclusion. Therefore, it was concluded that the yellow precipitate formed was cadmium sulfide or CDS. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred was because of the presence of sulfide anion. This was the result of the cadmium carbonate test, which we can see that a yellow precipitate was formed at the bottom of the test tube. And last but not least, the fourth confirmatory test for nit nitrite anions. For the short introduction, nitrites are inor inorganic compound containing the nitrite ion in which a nitrogen atom is bounded to the two oxygen atoms. It is a symmetric anion with equal nitrogen-oxygen bond length and oxygen-nitrogen-oxygen bond angle of approximately 120 degrees. Upon protonation, white nitrite anion produces weak nitrons Nitrous acid, which is unstable. So, for the first test of the confirmation of nitrite or NO2 negative, which is ferrous sulfate test, based on the theory provided and given and provided by Olabs.com, nitrites gave a dark brown or black coloration in ferrous sulfate test due to the formation of fe so 4 no or nitroso ferrous sulfate. To further explain this theory, let's take a look at the chemical, the formula of the chemical reaction. 
So, based on the test performed on ferrous sulfate, after adding some dilute acetic acid and ferrous sulfate solution into a portion of aqueous solution, it was observed that a dark brown or black coloration was ob ob obtained from the solution. And based on the information and evidences given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was concluded that a black or dark brown coloration from the solution was due to the formation of FeSO4NO or nitrosoferous sulfate. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the ferrous sulfate test was because of the presence of nitrite anions. And this is the result of the ferrous sulfate test. For the second test, for the confirmation of nitrite or NO2, which is starch or iodide test. Based on the theory given and provided by Olofs.com, nitrites reacted with potassium iodide in the presence of dilute sulfuric acid to liberate iodide, and the liberated iodine formed a blue-black complex with starch. To further explain this theory, let's take a look at the formula of the chemical reaction. So, based on the test performed on starch iodide, after adding a few drops of dilute sulfuric acid and a few drops of potassium iodine solution, followed by freshly prepared starch solution into a portion of aqueous solution, it was observed that a blue solution was obtained. And based on the information and evidence given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was concluded concluded that iodine liberated during the reaction which caused to form a blue-black complex with starch. And so, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the starch iodide test was due or because of the presence of nitrite anions. So, for the and this was the result of the starch iodide test which gave a blue-black complex or blue-black coloration of the solution. So, for the third test, for the confirmation of nitrite, which is diphenylamine test, and based on the theory provided in, given and provided by Olafs.com, in the presence of nitrites, diphenylamine was oxidized, giving a blue coloration. To further explain this theory, let's take a look at the result of the diphenylamine test. Based on the test performed on di diphenylamine, after adding a few drops of diphenylamine to a portion of aqueous solution, it was observed that a deep blue coloration was obtained in the solution. And based on the information and evidence given which supports the observations noted during and after the experiment or test, we finally reached a conclusion. Therefore, it was concluded that in the presence of nitrite, diphenylamine got oxidized, giving a deep blue coloration. And so with this, we can confirm that the chemical reaction occurred during the diphenylamine test was because or was due to the presence of nitrite anions. So for the conclusion, the presenters therefore conclude that using a quantitative analysis on each wet test, wet test performed on carbonate, sulfite, sulfide, and nitrite anions, it was confirmed that the chemical reactions occurred on dilute hydrochloride tests and magnesium sulfate tests were due to the presence of carbonate anions. It was con and it was confirmed that the chemical reactions occurred on barium chloride tests, potassium dichromate tests, and potassium permanganate tests were due to the presence of sulfite anions. And it was confirmed that the chemical reactions occurred on sodium nitroproside tests, lead acetate tests, and cadmium carbonate tests were due to the presence of sulfide anions. And last but not the least, it was confirmed that the chemical reactions occurred on ferrous sulfate tests, starch iodide tests, and diphenylamine tests were due to the presence of nitrate anions. That's all for our presentation. Thank you for listening.